family and discovering the community and say it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to have all these people, all you people gather here in such a nice atmosphere. It's a real pleasure to come and talk. But myself, uh, I was defined as an interdisciplinary artist, yes, but I'm, I'm really coming from the music. I'm a musician, composer, and also a researcher. And um, what I've tried to do in, in, in my work is to have artistic action happening, and also to have reflection happening um, as a scholarly investigation in academia. Uh, but what I try to do nowadays is, is that these things are not separate. There are two expressions of the same thing. So maybe this is a kind of framing of the talk that I will, I will give today. Um, the theme is curiosity, and I will frame this from a kind of personal point of view. Um, and it will also be kind of a path of my own curiosity. I would like to present to you what I've been curious about for the last few years and what I'm curious about now. Um, in order to start with this, I would like to start with the most important, which is music. So let's listen a little bit, just in, in, in silence, and then let's get going. Sounds for you to wake up in. <laughs> it's an extract from it's the last extract from the last piece of my latest album. But 
point here that I would like to ask you is, is you listen to something in a group, how did the presence of the other person, of the other persons, affect that listening experience? We come together to listen to music quite often in, in, in groups. Of course, we also do it at home, but I think that the listening experience is quite different from this kind of community listening and the solitary listening. And uh, while I do my talk, I would like to, you to keep in mind this kind of reflect on that what's different and, and what is not. Now, this brings me to the subject of the day, which is intersubjectivity. And I would like to uh, kind of subtitle this Cur Curiosity of the Other, so of the other person, uh, which is the theme that interests me right now, most, mostly. Um, and in order to start an inquiry on intersubjectivity and what is between us, a good place to start might be ourselves. Um, there's an unfortunate tradition or heritage that we, have, that we have of our own understanding in our culture that is related to religious and philosophical past in, in Europe that we see ourselves as some kind of um, processing machines where we input perceptions and we output actions and somewhere here there's a kind of a machinery that can be nowadays the computing uh, metaphor is much used so some kind of computing happens and then input, computing and output and at the same time there's um, internally kind of an image of the world that is created so the world is outside as a real thing, as a physical real thing it gives us information Computed to create our own internal world and then output something to it. Now, from what I've been reading and my kind of practicing in intellectual inquiry, this is this should be abolished. This should be <laughs> it should be we should stop with this. And, and all the contemporary sciences show quite a different picture of you. And let's go a little bit into that. Um, the human is something that, and all organisms, are something that move, have a body, engage themselves in action. And then the framework where we act mm, is much more complex than just a simple input out system. And it's a dynamic thing where things go um, both ways. Um, here I have some kind of catch words of the analytical um, entities that can be included in this uh, in this framework. Um, so it's a we are body minds engaged in action and perception. And what I'll try to argue in this first part of this talk is that. The world is not solid as we think, and ourselves we are not solid as we think. Uh, here, this is an example that comes from a book, uh, or it's an illustration of an example that comes from a book. Uh, in the evolutionary process, we have had to survive, and this is one of the cases of survival. Let's say you have one chance to get catch that reindeer and live and procreate and that reindeer moves at 36 kilometers an hour that's 10 meters per second that's one second across this room so you have one second to do what? you have to, you need to anticipate where the animal is moving you need to prepare your own body for the action execute those actions, be successful but at the same time, check your anticipation and, and reality, what's where you're actually going, what's happening. Um, try to stumble and then catch and prepare your body to take the weight of that, let's say, 150 kilo 
animal, which is also, you have an image of that, uh, you have already in your body an image of that um, animal and how it will affect, how its uh, kinetic energy will affect your, your body. And so one second to do that. And uh, there's a French neuroscientist, Alain Bertoz, um, who has been studied on that example, comes from, from one of his books. And he says that actually we do these things in a couple of dozens of milliseconds. And in reality, there's no time for this input output system to work. There, there needs to be prediction. And his thesis or one of his major points is that humans are predicting machines or he says our brain, the, the body, mind system is a, it's a predicting machine that we function all the time by making assumptions of the world and predicting our ideas and when the prediction and the reality clash we all have this experience that oh I thought that it was something else and, and, and then there's the kind of perceptual uh, blurry um, that we are kind of ahead of the reality all the time mm. and in this construction of reality, at least these elements, prediction, action, perception, and memory, entangle, interwine into, into a complex system. Um, now let's take, go into another part or another zone um, about ourselves. This comes from the humanity, humanity is more about how we relate to the environment. So here we have a, a person, and this is, is buying grapes. And the, the grape and ourselves, we are somehow made of the same stuff. We are part of nature, uh, and, and physically, I mean, on, on a molecular level, we are connected to the things that surround us. We also breathe the air, stewards, we eat. But there's an ontological continuum in nature, and, and somehow we, <coughs> our consciousness emerges from that. Same stuff as grape. Um, now, when we eat that grape, of course, uh, it becomes even more part of us. We digest it, it becomes ourselves, and, and then we also give uh, nutrition to the grape when we go to the toilets. And, and this is the ecological view of the human, that our body is porous in a new sense. We are, we are truly part of the things that surround us. Uh, and Mark Johnson, who is an American philosopher, um, who writes a lot about embodiment, uh, he says that the, uh, our basic meaning and, and then higher levels of culture actually are built on this embodied meeting with the world. Uh, the fact that somebody encountered a grave gave it gives rise to wine culture and the fact that we can talk about it. But without this primordial meeting with the things, they would not be higher forms. Uh, of, of culture and, and he has written a few books about how language actually is built on, on motor um, motor functions or motor perception as in you when you're an infant you make trajectories in your surroundings and these actually create concepts above Side, under, and these actually become our mental framework. Uh, so the primordial embodied experience feeds us, gives us the possibility to have higher, higher power. Um, now, what I'm trying to do in this short, and these are these scientists are illustrators, they've written quite many books. And I invite you to, this is Berthoz, uh, Brain Sense of Movement, 
He has written many other books also, a neuroscientist. And then this is uh, Mark Johnson, Meaning of the Body. I recommend really, really warm in this book. I think it's, for me, it has been a groundbreaking experience to read. Um, what I've tried to do in this short introduction is, is to deconstruct ourselves <laughs> and uh, connect us to the world in, in a sense that in a poetic way we could think that we are transparent or some kind of, not fully transparent of course, I mean, the self exists and, and uh, we perceive ourselves as selves, um, but a sense of transparency and a sense of um, um, extension of ourselves towards the outer sphere. Um, so some, I presented some arguments for it uh, from not neuroscience and, and philosophy and this would, the, the, the nice question here is like where is the mind when we go about in our daily business and I see you, is my mind is it in you or is it in me? Uh, the objects that we fabricate, I think a lot of my mind is actually in that computer <laughs> stored in its memory. Uh, it's, it's a point of view that we can adopt. And now if we talk about other people, where is the frontier between me and you? And between you? Um, the interhuman, as I said, is, is the, or the intersubjectivity, is, is the thing that interests me right now. Um, and I would like to then here to present a, a thinker of the interhuman, where the, the term interhuman comes from, Martin Buber, uh, who is long gone, uh, in 65 already. Um, he was an um, Austrian-born Jewish philosopher, theologist, also fervent, fervent uh, believer, and a social scientist, mystical figure in a sense, but at the same time very important for. I mean, he has made an important imprint in, in philosophy and, and social science. Interesting figure because many has many bases. Uh, so he uh, said at some point, or wrote at some point, that to become I, one is the other. And he has a whole theory that humans are constructed completely through the other, from, from, our, uh, from our being in community and, and meeting of, of people. And he also, he, he was an um, idealist or, or utopian thinker. And he thought that the, um, there would be a level of real meeting of people, uh, a relationship that could be established which would lead to a human transcendence, a kind of accomplishment of the human population. Um, so that's his idealist side. But uh, in, in more of a, let's say, a theoretical level, he states that human cannot be understood as an individual will cut, uh, you will frame something that cannot be, or you will reduce, framing will reduce the whole too much, you can understand. Um, nor as a collective society, because then the picture is too large and you won't have an image of the, uh, uh, of the individual's subtleties. So he says that the option here is to look at the relation in, in between. And then the argument goes that human is constructed through the other in a very physical sense, where the egg and sperm meet in the mattress, um, sperm coming from another person, and then being expelled as a child. It's, it's, it's really physical. But then, also socially, as infants, we I think there's this notion in, in psychology that um, infants for several years think they are the same person as their mother and the separation is slow 
and then comes the ecological community, teaches us things, teaches us how to behave, uh, teaches our culture, and then the mental aspect of things like language. Uh, I, we think that we possess language. I'm a holder of language, I should say. But that's not true. I mean, I, um, I possess a part of it and also a personal style of Finnish language. But actually, Finnish language is a common uh, You cannot say that one single person has it. It's, a, it's out there existing between us. And the whole richness of the vocabulary is only made by the community of speakers. Uh, and this goes on for many other subjects such as music and uh, whatever form of culture you, uh, you want to think. Um, yes, here yeah, I wrote that there's a wording that can be used here is that um, we think in culture or through culture, but you can also say the other way, the culture thinks through us. Oh, the, this is very much related to the uh, epoch and the, the time, the time thinks through us, which is a nice idea. Like Our individual ideas are not so individual, maybe it's, it's the kind of the zeitgeist that goes through us. Mm. Now, Buber coined the term in between, which is related to the interhuman, and to my knowledge, he's the only theoretical philosopher who has really thought of the in between as the essence of humanity. And I find that highly, highly, highly interesting. Um, now, this in between. In our first listening experiment this morning when we woke up with that music 10 minutes ago, what I tried to do is, is um, did you feel the other person when you were listening? It's a silent thing when you were listening, there's no words are exchanged, which is sitting there. But I have the feeling that, as a music professional, I have the feeling that listening together is quite different from listening at all. And this, this silent community thing is, is interesting for me. Um, it's, I would argue that we feel it all. Please counter argue if you do. Uh, if you do not feel it. But, um, or intuitively, it's evident. But then when you go into the conceptual terrain or analytical, we have no tools. Well, I'm not aware of the tools that we could use to, to really like what is there, what's happening, what are the, uh, the strings that tie us between. So this in between us is now my frontier of curiosity. Uh, and I'm, I'm planning, uh, I'm starting an inquiry upon it on a, in a scientific sense try to find the tools to, to dig into that space between us. Uh, I would like to illustrate the power of this in between by the networks we have created uh, with the uh, IT technologies. When I came across the internet for the first time, it was a, a, a tool for um, information retrieval, uh, which was interesting enough and spent many hours on it but then when the social media revolution started and the uh, mobile devices revolution started what happened was that people started connecting with each other and then I think it exploded and it became a, a new culture uh, in itself a new, really a new form of culture and what I see is is that people have such need and such want to um, <coughs> connect with the other. And this new means of intersubjectivity that we have now, that we're using, um, um, the, the rush for it comes from that need. And it's um, the, the social media or the network 
world. I think it's a, it's a good place to also start an inquiry uh, of the industrial space because as a technologist I can have a grasp on it and it can, can be analyzed quite well. So for me this, what we're doing on, on the social media is a, it's a new expression of the industrial space. Uh, specifically now, for me as a musician, I'm interested in what's happening between musicians. We can see this picture is Haydn uh, with his um, string quartets. Now, what's I like the picture because this, there's so much intent in the in the expressions of these people. Uh, and we can kind of imagine what's going on in between those people. Um, I'm, in my sense, when, when we go and play music, it's, we don't exchange words, of course, between tunes we do, but when we play, we don't. So the communication goes through music, goes through body. Uh, this non-verbal abstract domain of connecting to the other end. People who have experience in, in ensemble musicianship know that there's a, it's a strong way of bonding to other people also. It really connects and, and uh, I think it's a, it's a strong experience for all people who have played music together. Uh, it's, there's a, another person playing there, we're playing sing, it's, it's something good, something will happen. It's also a possibility of transcendence. So that's what I am looking for. It's, it's not an established research, it's not yet done. But this is, yeah, this is what I'm curious about right now. And um, as a kind of concluding or ending point to this, I'll give you, I'd like to give you a task for today, um, which comes from the Eastern traditions. Um, do this experiment when you go out on the street, when you cross somebody or meet somebody, before the relationship is established, before you say it, before really in the first seconds of that, just check your mind and see what's, what's there. It's, it's really interesting. I think it's a key also to the, uh, um, it's, it's a, a possible key to kind of, uh, See how we construct the other people when we meet them. There's this saying that we judge the other person in the first second when we meet them, so this is a tool to see how we how do it and what happens. That's uh, my talk. Thank you. Um, if you're interested, there's some stuff online, and especially I've I'm prepared back with my records because I want to show that they are in the music. This is what I'm doing. But I left it with my own. <laughs> so uh, if you got interested in any of this, uh, at least the music is, is, is online. So, I'm somebody who really likes to discuss. So please, if you have any comments or counter arguments or anything, let's discuss.